double back with Kenty Mac. Hi, welcome to the newest gymnastics podcast, Double Back with Kenty Mac. Each week, I'll watch a meet and discuss it with a friend. This week, please welcome my buddy, Miguel. Hi, Kent. Hi, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, exactly. We've been friends for maybe 10 years. We're coming up on 12, actually. Wow. And in those 12 years, we have very much enjoyed talking about gymnastics. So much gymnastics. So now we're letting everyone in on the conversation. Yes. And the exciting part is you've had a move in the last couple of years, and now you're much closer to Simone Biles. So can you tell us about that? Yes. So at the height of the pandemic, about almost a year and a half ago, or two years at this point, I guess, um, my company decided to relocate me for work to the Woodlands, Texas, where in the last uh, five months, uh, my husband and I finally bought a house in Simone Biles' neighborhood of Spring, Texas. Not on purpose, but it worked out beautifully. We are about two miles from her gym. That's amazing. Have you had sightings? Yes. So just uh, following the Summer Olympics, um, they had a big homecoming sort of parade for her here in spring. And uh, it was really informal. She was just driving along, like sitting out on top of a car. And we saw her. I shouted out to her and she just said, hi, guys. That's amazing. So fun. So how's the new house? How are things going in Texas? The new house is great. Uh, we've settled in quite well. We can't believe how much space we have here in Texas. Everything is bigger in Texas, as they say, um, but we're enjoying it. That's great. That's amazing. Well, before we jump into this week's meet, I just want to give a couple of quick catch-ups. The Two weeks ago, I watched Georgia versus Michigan with Mike. And at that time, Amanda Cashman had a big problem with her vault. And we talked about how that helps make fans of gymnastics. When you see someone have a mistake and then you get to watch them come back and be successful. So this weekend, Amanda Cashman led off Georgia on the vault and she hit her Yurchenko full for a 9-8 and did an amazing job. I don't think anyone was cheering louder for Amanda Cashman than me right here in my basement. So great work, Amanda. And then last week, we talked to Dr. Sam about Florida versus Alabama. And at that time, we were hoping to see Ellie Lazari get into more events. Well, unfortunately, this week, it appears Ellie Lazari got injured in warmups. So sending all our best to Ellie for quick healing, quick recovery. I'm not sure exactly what's up with her injury, uh, but we're so sad to hear about that and sending her all the best. And once again, Queen Megan Skaggs went in the all around and won again this week. So great job, Megan. Great so yesterday, job. you and I both watched Cal at Washington. I was super excited to see Cal. I'm wearing my Cal sweatshirt. If you can see it. Nice. Yes. I got to attend a meet, a home meet at Cal a few years ago when I was on a business trip. So that started making me a fan of Cal. And now I'm just a huge fan of Cal because they do such clean, beautiful gymnastics, and they're great at bars. They are very great at bars. So why don't we take it rotation by rotation? We started with Washington on the vault and Cal on their very best event, the uneven bars. What were the Washington vaults that really stood out to you? Well, I really enjoyed Lana Navarro's uh, vault. She had the one and a half um, blind landing, as you know, um, and she did quite well. She executed it quite cleanly. She had a small sidestep, but otherwise did very well. I agree. That was one of the highlights for me, too. I hadn't seen her do that vault, um, and I was excited to hear that she was going to try it, and she did it so, so well. I was really happy for her. I also yeah. thought Skylar Killo Wilhelm from Washington. I was just going to say that. She did Yurchenko full. Yeah. She did such a great job. Her height, her amplitude, her 
she was stick straight the whole time, really good landing, good distance. Um, nothing wrong with that ball. She did a fabulous job. Exactly. Um, I was also going to mention Kennedy Davis. She had a solid Yachenko. Um, she was just a little short, but solid all around. Yeah. The, this will be of note when we get to Cal on vault, but the first couple of vaulters for Washington thought they did a really nice job. A few Yurchenko fulls to start the, the lineup. Really clean, straight nine, seven fives for their first three, um, which I thought this is a very reasonably scored meet. Those were appropriate scores for those vaults. Um, right. And I, I thought the whole lineup looked really solid. I was really happy to see that Washington put together just a really solid looking lineup. I know they'll be hoping to get more 10 0 vaults into the lineup as they progress, but as a check in point, you know, check plus for Washington. Right. Especially because this is so early in their season. So they have lots of room to grow from here. Good point. It's only the second meet for both both of these teams. Um, so then Cal over on the bars, I mean, it's just, it's a pleasure to sit back and watch what they do on bars. Um, Nina Shank sticking her dismount in the second spot up. I thought that was one of the first really big wow moments for me. Yes, that double layout that she did with such ease. She just made it look so easy. Yeah, Cal, I mean, the, the releases are high. The legs are always pasted together and stick straight. Andy Lee went up in the third spot. She has the really exciting opening to her routine where she mounts facing the low bar and starts with that pack salto that flies down to the low bar. I thought she also did a really excellent job. She was one of the highlights for me too. Yes. Um, another one that really stood out for me, which was Maya Bordas who um, is the reigning co-national champ in that event. Um, she had beautiful height on her straddle Jaeger uh, with the double tuck, and she stuck that landing so beautifully. Absolutely. One of the things that stands out to me about Maya Bordas, she casts up into those handstands, and then it's almost like she holds it and then goes. And I think that shows such control. It's so impressive to see how she just has mastery of that routine. Yes, absolutely. I would agree with that. And just a couple of highlights as well from the end of the Washington uh, vault rotation. Geneva Thompson does a huge Yurchenko full. She took a big hop on this one, but the dynamics of that are really impressive. And then, of course, Amara Cunningham batting, you know, clean up at the end. Just a huge Yurchenko full. She scooted again also, didn't quite stick it, but... Right. Such a big, beautiful vault from her. Yeah, solid anchor position for Amara. Uh, she did so well. Um, small hop, but, you know, there's room. So Washington, like we said, has the one 10 value vault. Um, they'll hope to, of course, add some more of those. I don't know if they have some more currently in the tank or if they need to recruit some more of those in future seasons. Um, and then... I counted four sticks on the uneven bars from Cal. So I thought that was a really clean, very strong rotation. Cal got a 49.375 on the bars. Washington got a 48.925 on the vault. Excellent first rotation from both. Right, which um, was better than they did last week for Washington on the, in the same event. That's right. That's right. At this moment, it might be helpful to point out the wonderful Elisa Mao was the commentator. I thought she did a great job of taking us through the meet, telling us some of the interesting statistics from last week. Um, she's a real pleasure to listen to, and she was helpful, I thought, as we watched this meet. Yeah, I really enjoyed the like tidbits that she would share about the future for some of these women um, with regards to um, graduation and what kind of jobs they have lined up. I think they said Maya Bordas has got a job at Deloitte and Touche. So sh yes. shout out to a business woman. Exactly. I really enjoyed listening to all those tidbits. So the wrap up for me, I thought Washington looked strong and confident on the vault. 
I thought Cal just was so pretty on the bars, such a pleasure to watch. They do bars exactly how you're supposed to do it. Lots of the giant full to double tuck dismounts. I think four of their athletes do the giant full to double tuck. Yes. They'll get you by being clean and consistent. Right. Um, I, I thought it was quite telling that they all did so well that they, um, they ended up dropping Nevea D'Souza's score, even though she had like a solid performance. That's right. She, one of their three all-arounders, um, she got a 9.725 on her, her bars. I believe it was her dismount that looked like it pulled in a little bit too close to the bar and the landing wasn't super confident. I almost wondered because they're, this was an away meet for them. They were at Washington's arena. I wondered if a few of them might have just had issues adjusting to the bars, to the new setup there. A couple of the releases I thought pulled in close and her dismount I thought pulled in a little bit close. So I chalked that up to second meet and an unfamiliar arena. I think they'll continue gaining confidence on those as they go. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not easy to go from your home where you know the apparatus, adjust, make all the necessary adjustments. I know that as a competitive swimmer, when I was competing, going from home meets to away meets, there were adjustments that I had to make along the way. So you know. that's a really interesting comparison. When you had an away meet, how early would you arrive at the new arena and how much time would you have in that pool to kind of get acclimated? So uh, we would arrive the morning of the swim meet and uh, we would have, you know, a solid hour and a half of warm up. Um, but this is a general warm up. So you're warming up with everybody. Um, and so you just have to make those adjustments, especially for your flip turns and knowing where the flags are um, versus where you normally have them at home and adjusting your strokes for that, for those flip turns. So it's very interesting trying to make it all work. For any of those gym fans listening who are also swim fans, uh, can you tell about the events that you would swim? Oh, sure. So I was a distance freestyler and a backstroker. Uh, so I'd swim the 1650, which is the mile, the 800, the 1000, the 500, and the 100 and 200 backstroke as well. Awesome. Do you still swim? I do a little bit, not as much as I would like to. As you know, I was very much into lap swimming pre-pandemic. I had right. a gym near me where I could go and do my lap swims every morning. I haven't been doing that in the last couple of years, but we were just talking yesterday. I really look forward to getting back to that in the future yeah. when it starts to feel like that's a, a good idea again. Yes, yes. In fact, I, I was just saying to you how um, after the meet, I was so pumped. I felt like I could go to the gym. In fact, I did go to the gym um, and I ran three miles. Nothing good big. for you. Yeah. Good for you. I had to push back our start time this morning because I was out doing my five and a half mile walk. So All right. both of us feeling that inspiration from Cal at Washington, which I think takes us to the second rotation. So Cal went over to the vault. Washington yes. rotated over to the bars. The first athlete that went for Washington, as soon yeah. as she landed, it looked like they started throwing money money started falling from the sky did you notice that i did they were like shooting some like what looked like money but it was like paper obviously um they were so excited i wondered if that was maybe the cat the washington's stick celebration is that they shoot money in the air um, later on when they were on floor exercise i saw one of the athletes who had stuck her dismount wearing some stick shades Yes, I want a pair of those. So do I. So I thought that was great that Washington's creating this great excitement um, about their, you know, success celebrating their stick landings. Um, I thought that was really fun. Yeah, well, and, you know, it's a big deal to be competing today um, with how things went last year and people having to take time off and having to train on their own. 
in some cases, it's a big deal to even be competing and to nail some of your routines after not competing in some of them for like two years for some of them. That's right. Cal and all the teams in California in particular have been hit much harder. Um, The regulations of when they can train and how they can travel have been much more restrictive for them than they have been for some of the other teams around the country. So in particular, Cal, Stanford, UCLA have had a lot of trouble through the pandemic and their COVID protocols and traveling and having to quarantine and not having to get to practice as much. Right. The announcers kept talking about the different COVID protocols that Cal has had to deal with and how difficult it has been for them to train. So, you know, bravo to them for the great job that they did. I think I counted two 10 start values for Cal on vault. Nevea D'Souza and Maya Lauzon both did the one and a half. Um, yes. Both of them ended a, a little bit short. I think Nevea had a, sh- a small hop back and Maya did more of a two steps back. Again, those will continue to grow as they gain confidence, I think. Yeah, second meet of the year. They're doing fine. Exactly. The highlight for me of Cal on vault was Milan Clausy. She nailed that vault. It was so exciting. I jumped out of my chair when that happened. Yes, it was so beautiful to see her stick her landing. Um, One thing that I did notice is she kept her mask on. Like, I guess she forgot to take it off, but like, I feel like that would have been a distraction for me, feeling something here. I think that was actually intentional. The Cal team has been really at the forefront of the safety, uh, projecting safety, showing how much they're, you know, working hard to stay safe. Um, They wear their masks for a lot of the gymnastics that they do. Sometimes you'll see them warming up with the masks on, just pulling them off to compete, sometimes just pushing them under their chin for their vault so they can pull them right back up. In terms of the audience, I'm not sure we're seeing bigger crowds this season for gymnastics than we saw last season. Last season, some arenas couldn't have fans at all, and some arenas had limited numbers of fans. This season, we're seeing lots of fans again. Some are wearing masks and some aren't. And I don't know what's required to attend the meets in terms of vaccination or or not. So right. I think the teams continuing to be safe, protect themselves, that's what's going to help get them through the season. Exactly. Safety first. Now, commentator guy, he said something that I thought was a little bit um confusing during vault he said unlike elite there's no d scores in college gymnastics meantime there was a graphic on the screen that showed who had 9.95 start values and who had 10.0 start values and i thought he's not saying what he thinks he's saying because they're actually i had questions about that Like, I wasn't sure what he was talking about because the graphic didn't match what he was saying. Right. I think he was trying to point out that college gymnastics still uses the 10.0 system. So if you, on all the events except vault, if you meet all of your difficulty requirements and complete all the elements the way you're supposed to, you'll start out at the 10.0. Whereas in elite, of course, the D score can keep growing with all the skills that you throw in, your neighbor, Simone Biles, can just create a D score that helps her, you know, blow everybody out of the water. And it's, of course, it's capped in college in that a 10.0 is as high as it can possibly go. But for him to say there were no D scores, I was just concerned that a casual gymnastics viewer might have been confused by that, especially given that they had displayed the D scores of all the vaults right there on the screen. Right, right. That was a little confusing. Um, But I I also thought it was interesting that they were talking about how um, it's more about nailing the skills you have as opposed to adding as many skills as possible on like elite gymnastics. That's right. That's one thing that I started to see in this rotation was the difference between Cal and Washington. 
Washington has all of the skills. Their athletes are very talented. Some really exciting routines. I think we'll get into some of the exciting bar routines that they did. They haven't zoned in yet on sticking those landings and getting everything really perfect in terms of the form. And that's where Cal is ahead of them right now. Cal has their form, their handstands, and they've really zoned in on those landings. And I think that's what made the difference between these two teams. Yes, very much so. Um, and they they stress this quite a bit, um, how it's uh, sort of a rebuilding year for Washington. Um, they have their new coach who did really well in her previous program. Um, and she, by all accounts, was very excited about joining this program specifically. Um, and she brings a lot to the table. She wants consistency out of the out of the, all of her athletes. Yeah, I'm excited to see what Jen Llewellyn can do with this team in the next few years. You know, when you start with a new program, you have the athletes that are on the roster, and she can now start recruiting her own team. You know, I think exactly. you'll. We've already seen great improvement from Washington this season. And I think we'll see it continue to get even more pronounced as she keeps changing the culture, recruiting her own athletes and, and making big strides there at Washington. Exactly. One of the routines that didn't score so great, but I thought was really exciting on the uneven bars was Brenna Brooks. They talked about how some of her in-between bar release moves were different than what the other athletes were doing. She did the shapash from the free hip and then the free hip up to high bar. It was just a different looking, really exciting routine. There was some form. She didn't stick the landing, but it was fun. I thought it was a fun routine to watch. Well, and she was one of the athletes that last competed in bars two years ago. So it's really interesting and really nice to see that she could still do it after two years. I mean, taking a break from competing for even like one season is a big deal, but two years, that's, that's a long time. Yeah. There are a lot of nerves when you compete that you have to mitigate and you have to be strong mentally to do that. Yeah, I thought she did a really good job. And speaking of the mentally strong, for anyone who followed Washington last season, they have talented athletes, but there would be meets last season where they couldn't pull together that complete performance. And in terms of, it was so refreshing and exciting to see them pull together that complete performance. The scores weren't as high as they're going to be, but they didn't have problems completing the routines. They didn't have problems putting together five great scores on each apparatus. So Again, bravo to them and these athletes for doing such a great job, pulling their confidence up a step and, and competing out there. Yes, it's not easy competing. So then Skylar Killa Wilhelm was another highlight for me. Um, silky smooth, the way she does those swings, her releases, stuck the dismount cold. That double I mean, tuck. She's round. a star. Yes. And one of the things that I actually have in my notes about her is that she has a really big name and she lives up to that big name. <laughs> That's a really good point. Yeah. Big she sure does. Uh, what were the other standouts to you, either from Cal's vault or from Washington on the bars? Oh, uh, from... Washington, I have Geneva Thompson. She learned a new dismount, the double layout, and she stuck it. It uh, looked so good. I couldn't believe that was a new dismount for her. It was high, pretty arch, totally stuck it. Exactly. That was so exciting to see, especially like when they know that they've stuck it and they, they, everything just worked out so beautifully. They're smiling. They're just radiating. Um, they're shooting um, money, they're throwing around shades, and it was exciting. Yes. Um, from Cal, yes, Maya Bordas, um, I have her vault. She made it look easy, that Yashenko, I mean, she didn't stick it, but she still made it look easy. 
And I think with gymnastics, that's a really big deal because these skills are really hard on a normal day. And then you add competition to that um, and to make it look easy, that's fantastic. That was my note from Cal too. I just thought it was a clear difference to see them with their really crisp Yurchenko fulls. And like you said, there were some scoots and some little hops, but just the way they could get right up off the horse, really clean form in the air, dropped it in and knew exactly where their landings were. That's just where they're one step ahead of Washington. And I wasn't in agreement with the score for Andy Lee. Those first three vaults for Washington were very good Yurchenko fulls with hops for 975. Mm -hmm. She did what I thought was a very clean, very good Yurchenko full, also with the hop, and got a 9725. I didn't think that was worse than those first three vaults from Washington. It wasn't. Maybe they didn't have the same vantage point that you and I did. <laughs> there you go. There you go. We'll text them. We'll get it all cleared up. It'll, it'll be right next week. Exactly. Now, we'll hold on to that because I think that Andy got an overscore later in the meet. <laughs> but I did not think that, I did not agree with her score on the vault. Yes. I, yeah. We'll see what happens as the season goes on. Very good. Um, the other thing that I noted on Washington for the bars, I think it was Brenna Brooks had multicolored ribbons in her hair. She did. And I didn't know if those were uh, symbolizing something, if they were celebrating something for this meet, or if that's just how she likes to wear her hair. But I loved the colorful ribbons and I wanted to know more about them. Yeah, they didn't they didn't mention anything about the the different color ribbons, but I did I did like seeing the color. Yeah, me too. That takes us right into rotation three because the lead off for Washington on the beam was Brenna Brooks. And I don't and know if you noticed Texas. this. Oh, she's from Texas. I did hear them say she's from Texas, so my ears perked up even more. Well, when I perked up was when she mounted. And she had some hairography. I don't know if you saw it, but she mounted the beam and then she flipped her hair as though to say, here I am. You better pay attention because yes. I'm about to do my beam routine. Yes, she had great extension on her leaps. Uh, it was just really nice to see that. She had a little wobble, but she stayed on, which is you know hard to do. Uh, you have to fight when you're up there on that small beam, but... She stuck her dismount. I thought her work was characterized by really quick movements, really sprightly, you know, quick leaps, um, quick uh, footwork. I thought it was really fun to watch her. And I did think that her 955 was a little bit low for that routine. Again, I think that this, for those who watch a lot of college gymnastics, there's a lot of meets that are overscored. There's a lot of meets where everything you see is 985 and higher. And I did think that the judges did a nice job of separating the scores in this meet. We saw nine fives, nine sixes, nine sevens. They kept them in range. For the most part, I thought they gave the high scores to the right people, but these were a bit more realistic scores than some of the enthusiastic scores we see in other meets. Right, right. Um, something else that I really enjoyed seeing about Washington on the beam was they definitely had fight. Um, Taylor, you know, she had a big balance check and she even fell off. Uh, her confidence just wasn't quite there, um, but she had a one and a half dismount solid in spite of all of that. So I would say that's a great fight. But then immediately following her was Kennedy Davis and they needed a big performance out of her. There was a lot of pressure uh, for her to do well after Taylor. Um, and she nailed it, I thought. She did. Yeah, my note about her, it, first of all, she transferred from Arizona. So this is her first season competing for Washington. So I was curious about that because I did hear them say something about her competing in Arizona. And I was like, I'll, I'll ask Kent about that. Yeah, um, I don't know any more information except that um, we've seen throughout the years when an athlete wants to transfer, 
Sometimes it's for personal reasons. Sometimes it's to be closer to their family. Sometimes it's for academic reasons. Maybe the major that they they want to pursue is stronger at another school. They can enter what's called the transfer portal and let other coaches know that they're interested in transferring. And if other coaches want to contact them, they can begin having those discussions. So wow. I thought it was, it seems like she's doing really well, as you pointed out at Washington. Um, I hope that, you know, everything seems to be working out great for her with this transfer. But I agree with you. Her confidence looked great. She did a back handspring, back handspring layout. So a triple series for her acro mm -hmm. and it, really good. I put three underlines on that. I thought she did such a nice job of covering the whole beam, landing it with big confidence. Really nice job. Uh, another one that I really enjoyed was Dea Moody's uh, performance. She has such great artistry, and I wrote like great artistry, H to T, head to toes. Agree, totally agree. And that's one that Elisa Mao did an excellent job of preparing you for the exciting routine that you were about to see. Um, yes. The the my favorite part of her routine, she did a back handspring layout and immediately jumped up into that jump, and I. That's yes. something you rarely see. And it was so pretty and such, such a surprise. Yes, such power, I would say, from that. I thought she had such confidence, too. She just moved through all of her skills forcefully. And I was never concerned that she was going to not hit everything. Right. Now, back to Taylor Rousson and her, her leap that caused her problems. I noticed yeah. that she lost her balance and ended up falling off. It was that three quarter twisting leap. And I also noticed that Morgan Bowles also does that three quarter twisting leap. She lost her balance, but saved it, stayed on the beam. She did. I wrote big wobble on leap. And because they were both three quarter twisting leaps, I wondered if those might be new to their routines. If maybe that's an upgrade that Jen Llewellyn is working with them on adding in. I would need to go back and see what their routines were last season. But that's another thing, just as you said earlier, second meet, no big deal, continue gaining confidence, and they're going to be right on on those leaps when we see them in a few more weeks. Yes. Um, one of the things that really stuck out to me in bars uh, from both teams was when they performed the gainer front full. Mm. That makes me cringe, like because it looks so... Like there's so much, so many details that you, if you don't nail it, they could really end badly for you. Uh, but I, I mean, it's beautiful to watch, but I was like, oh my God. Yeah, there's the gainer front where they're kind of just standing on one foot and then they start flipping forward. Then there's the gainer back where they're running toward the end of the beam and they end up flipping backward the other way. And both of them look like you could easily land right on your head. But it's yeah. fun to see how they magically fly through the air and bring it to their feet. Right. And I, and I wrote for her, it was nice to see Morgan come back on this event because her previous event, she, she fell on the dismount. So it was nice to see that she still has that bite that I was talking about, um, you know, especially second meet in. That's interesting. We did not talk about her bars routine, but you're right. She was going for the giant full to Delchev to overshoot. And it seemed like her hands were maybe off on that giant full. So she stopped and just did another giant and then continued on with the routine. So then it felt like her routine had been a little bit longer than what she's used to. Maybe she was a little bit more tired at the end. Right. Couldn't quite pull that dismount around. So that one seemed like one thing going wrong kind of snowballed into a couple of more problems that the routine wore on. That's one that I'm going to be absolutely cheering her on in future weeks for her to get that release combination and pull around that double layout. Let's go, Morgan. You can do it. Exactly. So then with Cal was over on floor in the third rotation. I don't know if you noticed this. I thought when Nevea D'Souza, she did um, the front one and a half, the Rudy into a leap, and then she immediately bent down and did a front roll. 
And I wasn't sure if that was part of the choreography or if she was losing her balance and doing a really smart cover up. Well, the announcers mentioned that. They were like, we weren't sure if that was on purpose or, you know, that was the cover up. Um, I think it was a smart cover up. And I think it worked because she ended with a 9.775 on floor. Nice cover up, Nevaeh. Right. And that's experience for you. Um, knowing when to add something a little just extra, just to cover. Um, Another Cal athlete that stood out to me on floor because of her presence was Maya Bordas. I mean, she looks different out there than most everybody else. I thought she showed great dance. You just, your eyes are glued to her when she's performing. Yes. Uh, I wrote that she had um, nice control in her double tuck. and just very clean routine throughout. The announcers also mentioned last week, Cal had a meet at Stanford and they ended up absolutely tied. And then Cal put in a petition to have one of the scores changed and it was raised. And a lot of people on Twitter weren't sure whose score it was that had been changed. And they announced that it was Maya Bordas's floor score that was raised half a tenth last week that gave Cal the victory over Stanford. Right, I did hear about that um, yesterday and I, I thought that was really interesting because yeah. you never know, right? Like what, what's gonna be the tiebreaker? That's right, it might come down to that last half a tenth and good for the coaches for putting in that inquiry, good for the athlete if they had pointed out, wait, I don't think I got credit for this. Always make sure you're getting all the all the credit you deserve because it might come down to that little piece of a point there at the end of the routine. Yes, I also really enjoyed Milan Clausi's floor routine. Um, she makes a double pike seem really easy. Great height. Um, she showed lots of control with her double stag. Um, it was just really well done for me. One of the points I made of note for her was exactly that same, that double stag. She did the one and a half to front layout into a stag and she was headed right toward the corner. And I I was concerned she was going out, but she got right into that corner and presented and kept moving, didn't step out. Good for her. Saved that, again, just like we were saying, saved that tenth of a point. It might have come down to it there at the end and she had the presence of mind to not give that away. Right. Uh, and I think we, we saw a lot of that with the Cal team in general, that they're just very experienced, very clean with their routines. Um, they know when to pull back when they have to or, or to cover. So. The announcers, I believe, mentioned that Maya Lauzon was from nearby. And I wondered if the Cal coaches took this as an opportunity to let her compete more events. She ended up going in the all around and this might've been the first time that she did floor. Um, I thought her performance was very stylish as well. She has that pretty twisting form. She mounts with the front double twist. She does the one and a half through to double twist for her second pass. Nice flexibility, really beautiful job. Yeah, I would say overall, a very energetic routine. Um, She spared nothing. She just went for it Uh, with that front double full to the front tuck. um, It was great. Yeah, really nice job. This brings up Andy Lee. Very nice routine, got a 9-9. I have a problem with the judging on this one. So she did that front double twist to stag jump. It was clear she was completely overpowered on the front double twist. Yes, I wrote maybe too much power in the front pass. I totally agree with you. I thought her dance was beautiful. She did a great job of presenting that routine. I just thought that tumbling pass was not within control and the judges did not evaluate that appropriately. They need to save those nine nines for when she does her beautiful performance and the tumbling is totally within her control maybe they had a bad vantage point they didn't have the view that we had that's right exactly the commentator i believe said that that first pass was a little squirrely (laughs) yes 
So I had to text you when that happened. It was a little squirrely. I will say um, uh, one of the things that I wrote, like side note on this, uh, just before we went into the fourth rotation, the Husky's dog is so cute. Oh, I was so happy they put him on the screen. He's adorable. They were giving him treats. He was enjoying the floor exercise too. Yes, cheering them on. Um, Skylar, back to the beam. Skylar Killa Wilhelm lived up to her name once again. She did a triple series, which looked yes. right on. She connected them so beautifully. I mean, it was like she wasn't on the balance beam. She was just floating up there. And then she does the kick over pike front, which is a little bit unusual. You don't see too many athletes do that. Leaps were beautiful the aerial into the one and a half dismount, which was a little bit something extra. I was excited to see her on the beam. Yeah, I love a little extra. Just a little extra. Beam. Just a little extra on the beam. It's hard enough, but I'm gonna give you just a little extra. And the judges gave her a little extra too. Exactly. She ended with a nine nine on the balance beam. Well done. Very well. So then that takes us to the fourth rotation. Washington was on the floor and mm -hmm. Cal on the balance beam. Um, so far in the in the meet, I had sort of noted that Cal was scoring all in the low 49s on their events. Washington right. was in the high 48s on their events. Really close, but we could see the areas where Washington can continue to improve those scores, cleaning up the form cleaning up the landings. Um, yeah, and with this being so early in the season, they have time to actually clean up those routines and just nail them in the future. They just need a right. little more time in the oven. Just a little more time in the oven. Just a little more time. So then Skylar Killa Wilhelm started on floor. And I thought this was an interesting choice for the Washington coaching staff to put her up first she did a really great routine, very confident, solid, um, little scoops on her landings. But, you know, she just sets you out in such a confident place that I think it's probably easy for the rest of the team to go up and hit their routines after she sets the stage. Right. I, I saw a lot of power throughout her entire routine. And listen, it's not easy being the person to lead off your team because you set the tone for that event. And you want to set a, a strong tone um, because your teammates look to you, they, the confidence starts coming in with that leadoff spot. Leading off Cal on the balance beam was Nevaeh D'Souza. Throughout the evening, I think she, she was just a little bit off for this performance. I think I've seen her crisper and hit these routines a little bit more solidly in other routines and in other meets. Um, but again, she's a great person to start you out because she's going to hit that routine. I think the commentator said that she had hit 94 out of her 95 routines so far in college. That's who you want kicking you off on the balance beam. She had a little struggle on her backhand spring, um, yes. stuck her dismount, ended with a nine, six, seven, five, and it only went up from there. They were able to drop that score for their balance beam rotation. Like I said, the Cal team is so deep that even with a high enough score, they can still afford to drop that and go with their absolute highest scores. Um, not, not a bad performance. She did seem a little off her game, but you know, she's a fighter. She sure is. And another one of the routines that really stood out to me for Washington on the floor was Lana Navarro. I thought she had yes. crisp and clean tumbling, really nice leaps, and a fun routine. I mean, it was engaging. She was having a good time. And the way she stuck that double pike at the ending without moving either one of her feet, two foot stick. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I, I even wrote like she was very high on her double tuck, one and a half front layout, very clean as well. Um, Yes, she is definitely a standout for me as well. I also really enjoyed Amara Cunningham's um, floor routine. 
um, she had a lot of control in her first tumbling pass. She had a solid double pike at the end. And I really enjoyed the Justin Timberlake dance off that she had. That was really fun to watch. She's exciting. When she stuck that first tumbling pass, I think there was a shot of her face. Her mouth opened up and she was like, yeah. So yeah. I knew it was going to be a routine, a great routine as soon as I saw that. She's another one with great leaps, great tumbling, very fun to watch. I thought she took a step out of her leap pass. She does three turning jumps in a row. Mm -hmm. And I thought she landed and took a step. The judges obviously didn't take that deduction. She ended with a 9.925, but every other piece of it was thrilling to watch. And I'm a big fan of Amara Cunningham. Mm -hmm. For sure. Very big fan. Um, I wrote down that Gabby Wickman, uh, solid performance. Um, this is one of the competitors that I felt like will need a little bit more time. Her front double twist was more like one and three quarters. Yeah, they showed it on the replay. And I kind of wrote down, it's like she did the one and a half and then kind of a half turn into that jump that she did. Right. A little bit of a fake front double twist. Um, but like Again, you said, just a little bit more time. That'll grow as she gets more confidence competing in the lineup. I thought there was a little bit of softness in the middle of Washington's lineup. They started big with Skylar. They built to those fabulous routines at the end with Geneva and Amara. And the middle of the lineup just needs to bake a little bit more. Yes. Uh, I really enjoyed Geneva's hip hop moves throughout her uh, floor routine. Such energetic dance. It's like she's working very hard on these dance moves. I mean, it doesn't look like she's working hard, but she's expending a lot of energy with her movement. And not a lot of time because you have to fit in all of these tumbling passes. And That's right. Artistry and all the power and control that you need for these floor routines. But she did a, a very nice job. Now the commentators set us up for the dismount because they said she had missed the dismount last week. So of course you're rooting for Geneva. Come on, hit the dismount, hit the dismount. Unfortunately, she came in a little low on the front double twist and yes. couldn't land it. Her feet scooted out and she sat it down. And of course my initial reaction was they should change that tumbling pass. If that's a new tumbling pass and she's now missed it twice, they need to change the tumbling pass. But Thank you for reminding me earlier in our conversation. It's week two. We did not have a normal season last season. There's a brand new head coach. They're back to crowd in the stands now. It's going to come along. She's going to figure it out. She's going to go back to the gym and work it out. Um, I look forward to seeing her rock that tumbling pass in, in the next meet. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um... You know, it, it will only get better from here. I mean, some of it is nerves. Some of it is um, practice. Um, and some of it is just confidence, really, is what it will come down to. One of the routines toward the end of Cal's balance beam lineup was Madeline Williams. And I took a special note of her because she's on my fantasy gymnastics team. And up until now, she's only competed the uneven bars. So the commentators mentioned this was her first time doing balance beam. I thought she did an excellent job. Very solid, nice job. She got a 9825. That confidence will continue to grow, just like you said, as she gets more experience competing. But great start for her. Yes, I really enjoyed um, her double wolf turn, which is like one of my favorite skills to see on beam because it's really hard but if you can make it look easy you've nailed it for me um, and I also note that the announcers mentioned that she comes from the same club team as Nevea. oh I don't think I heard that yeah so we can see where the talent and the training comes from that's right absolutely Speaking of, Dea Moody, who we enjoyed so much on the balance beam, 
she used to train at Woga in Texas, where Nastia Lukin trained. Oh, so good that to know. artistry, that extension on the balance beam, they know what they're doing down there in Texas. Exactly. Texas. Extension is bigger in Texas. <laughs> Oh, so, and, and this rotation, uh, sorry, um, uh, this is where Maya Bordis got the stick shades. Yes. Stuck okay. her dismount. They ran up and put the stick shades on her. I thought she had, she just looked so solid. Her extension and her jumps was so pretty. I mean, she has presence and it's fun to, to be in the room with her. Yes, definitely fun. So overall, in terms of where both teams are, you know, Cal is a team that made nationals last year. They were top eight in the country. They look like they're right on the same path. They're going to continue cleaning up some of those routines that didn't quite score in the nine nines. And then they had lots of them that were in the nine eights and nine nines. So I think they'll continue to grow in their confidence throughout the season. They seem right on track. And Washington, hey, for a rebuilding season, to put up this confident-looking performance, to end with a 195.45, everything was a high 48 or a low 49, they're right on track. They're absolutely right on track. I mean, in spite of having a rebuilding year, the pandemic, everything surrounding this time, a new coach, um, they're all sort of getting used to where they all fit their footing. Um, it's really, really impressive to see how well they did yesterday. Uh, Cal is doing fantastic. They are definitely just going to be more polished as the season goes on. For anyone who wasn't able to watch the meet, the final score, Cal ended up with a 196.675. Washington had a 195.45. The all around was won by Maya Bordas with a 39.425, just barely edging out Skylar Killa Wilhelm at a 39.4. And I, I would say that those two were the breakout stars of the meet. I thought Maya Bordas for Cal and Skylar Killa Wilhelm for Washington both looked confident, prepared competed terrifically for these two teams. Absolutely. They both did a really, really solid job. They are, they have a bright future ahead of them competing. Who else were the, the meat standouts for you? I really enjoyed Amara quite a bit. Um, uh, I also really enjoyed Andy Lee's, uh, specifically on beam. This was one of the ones that I was talking about with the gainer full that I like really cringed to see it just because there's just so much. It's so intricate. And yet she did really well. Yeah, my note for her on beam, she makes such pretty shapes. She, the way that she uses her flexibility, she'll throw her leg up over her head. She makes beautiful shapes and it's fun to watch her routine. You, you watch because it doesn't look like everybody else's routine. Right. Very fun. Lots of flexibility. Um, I can't imagine doing any of those things. I also want to give a big shout out to two of the freshmen, Lana Navarro from Washington, who did a great job on vault and floor. And then yeah. Maya Lauzon from Cal, who went into the all around for the very first time this meet. And I thought showed herself off very well. Good yes. style, good presentation and execution. Things are very only uphill. Also. Yeah. Great energy, yeah. Good, so what were your other observations and questions and what else did you, what did you think about this meet? So um, I wasn't sure how the COVID protocols were gonna go uh, with, uh, with competing, but I was very enthused to see that everyone was wearing masks. Um, they were being as safe as they possibly could. Um, you know, it's just good to see healthy competition 
for me on TV. Um, it's been a while, um, but it's it's fun to watch. Uh, yeah, and as I said to you, it made me like go to the gym later on uh, and just work out. But um, you know, I I really enjoy watching gymnastics because I think it's almost gravity defying what these athletes can do out there. And I like seeing clean routines and, you know, high energy, nice height. Um, but yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. I, I was really, this gave me a lot of hope and confidence in the, these two teams that Cal seems right on track to be another top team again this year and Washington for the struggles they've had the last few years seems on a really good path. They all seemed to be very comfortable competing. They were all hitting routines. Um, I look forward to seeing more of them too. Yeah, and one of the things I, I noted that there was there seems to be a lot of pressure for the new coach, Jen, mm -hmm. um, because of the success that she had at her previous program. And they're hoping that she will bring that success to Washington. Yeah, Washington is a team that has been in that national rankings picture in the past. Um, and there's no reason that they couldn't be back there soon with, with Jen, with some great, super talented athletes that we saw, and even better to come. Yeah, it'll be fun to keep watching. Well, thank you so much for talking to me about this mead. Um, do you think you'll watch more Jen this season? Would you be willing to be a guest on the show in the future? Absolutely. I had a great time. Thank, Thank you. you. Amazing. So um, if any of the listeners want to reach out to you and talk about how much they also loved Andy Lee's beam routine, how can they reach you? Uh, well, my Instagram is at Jean-Luc Antonio. Uh, and it's Jean-Luc like uh, French. Um, and so is my Twitter. It's the same handle. Excellent. Well, Check those DMs. I'm sure there'll be lots of questions and comments about um, this meet and future meets. Um, you can reach me on Twitter at Kenty Mac or email me at kentymac at gmail.com. And we'd love to hear from the listeners. What would you like to hear us discuss in future episodes? Please subscribe and rate us wherever you listen to podcasts. Thank you so much for listening and we'll see you next week. Stay safe. Enjoy gymnastics. So subscribe to my YouTube channel at Kenty Mac Gymnastics. Double back with Kenty Mac.